Howdy again. We're going to continue on with the uh, endocrine anatomy, and we're moving on to the adrenal glands. All right, so your adrenal glands are sitting on top of each kidney. And let me bring up visible body here so we can take a look at. Oh, they've still got the uh, parathyroid glands up. So let's bring up our adrenal glands. These are pretty straightforward. So this is actually a view from visible body where they have stripped out the other organs of the, uh, that are located down here in the abdomen. Remember your kidneys are actually sitting back in the posterior um, abdominal area. They're behind most of the other structures and they're actually behind the uh, parietal peritoneum, that serous membrane that lines the abdominopelvic cavity. So right there and right there, those are your two adrenal glands, they look like little hats that are sitting on top of the kidneys. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, the more complicated part of the adrenal glands uh, gets into the internal divisions. So the adrenal gland is divided up into two major layers. Okay, one of those layers is called, so it extends from right there to right there, all of that composes the cortex and then the internal portion makes up the medulla. So cortex and medulla, those are terms you'll hear more than once in uh, anatomy. You've heard cortex before, like the cerebral cortex. You've also heard medulla before, like the cerebral medulla. Uh, cortex um, includes tissues near the surface of an organ. The medulla is like the juicy center of the organs, so the more internal structures. So the adrenal cortex is going to consist of, so if there's a whole adrenal gland there, kind of in blue, tissues near the surfaces, and then on the inside, which I'll color in in red here, your medulla is going to be down in there. All right, so we're looking at a blow up of the adrenal cortex over here so, and a blow up of the medulla there. Um, the cortex and the medulla are the layers of the adrenal gland. Now, what about the sublayers? The cortex is divided up into three sublayers. The capsule that's indicated here on the diagram is a connective tissue covering. Um, it's just involved in covering and protecting the adrenal glands, separating them from other structures in the body. The capsule does not produce any hormones. Now, if you go deep to there and you actually enter the cortex, the outermost layer of the cortex is called the zona glomerulosa. All right, and on the video lectures for the physiology side, we'll hear about hormones produced by the zona glomerulosa. There's one called aldosterone that we'll mainly focus in on. Now, if you go deeper into an adrenal gland from there, we're still in the cortex near the surface, but you have a completely separate sublayer here that's called the zona fasciculata. You're going to need to practice the spelling on these. These are kind of odd odd words. Um, and you can, you can see this actually looks like strips of cells, almost looks like curtains or vertical blinds composed of cells. And then if you go a little bit deeper from there, you have another sublayer or zone of the adrenal cortex, and this is called the zona reticularis. So on the physiology side, we're going to talk about different hormones that each of those uh, sublayers produces. Main one in the zona fasciculata will be a hormone called cortisol, which is involved in uh, stress responses. And the main hormone made by the zona reticularis or hormones are um, sex hormones. All right, and then if you go deeper into the adrenal gland, you wind up in the adrenal medulla. And um, the adrenal medulla produces. Uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine, or also known as adrenaline and noradrenaline, which are also involved in 
stress responses and the fight or flight response, if you remember that from biology 201. So the zona glomerulosa, the cells in here are arranged almost in like a swirl-like pattern if you looked at them under a microscope. And then the zona fasciculata, the cells are arranged in strips. Um, and then if you get, when you get down into the zona reticularis, that word reticular means web-like. The cells are almost arranged in almost like a spider web type fashion down in there. So that's where those particular layers and sublayers got their names. All right, so moving on. Let me escape out of my drawing here. Here's another view of the adrenal glands that you can take a look at here on this PowerPoint. This gives you a nice representation. There's the adrenal cortex that I'm kind of highlighting there with the cursor. And again, if you blow that up, it's divided up into those three zones, glomerulosa, fasciculata, and reticularis. And then in here in the center, that's your adrenal medulla. So the adrenal glands, you maybe didn't know that the adrenal glands were quite that complex, and they do make an, um, several different types of hormones we'll be talking about over on the physiology side. Let me skip over, since on the study guide um, I have the thymus listed next. Here's the thymus. The thymus is a gland that is involved in, um, it's the location where um, a certain type of white blood cell matures. Those are called T lymphocytes, which are very important for your immune system function. And we will uh, learn about those when we cover the immune system a little bit later during the semester. So those particular white blood cells actually mature in the thymus. So this is a gland that sits up just a little bit uh, superior to the heart. Pull it up in visible body over here. Here we go, thymus. All right, so this is another nice little view on visible body. They've left the heart in for you and stripped out everything else. And there's your thymus sitting right up there so on the superior aspect of the heart. And also a little bit kind of over on the right-hand side as well. The thymus is actually larger when you're an infant because your immune system is still developing. You're developing lots of these different T lymphocytes that are gonna help give you immunity to various types of microorganisms that you get exposed to. And as we get older, we reach adulthood and we get older, the thymus actually shrivels and shrinks because we don't need it quite as much anymore as we get older. Now let me back up and go to the pancreas. All right, hopefully you guys remember where the pancreas is from your Biology 201 class. Let me pull up this view here on visible body. Here's your pancreas right here. And visible body has it divided up into three sections. And I've just highlighted that there in blue. So here's the liver, and that's the gallbladder right in there. And of course, there's the small intestine. The first part of the small intestine, if you guys remember, that's called the, the duodenum. Um, and the stomach would be located right here. So the visible body has stripped the stomach off in this particular view so we can get a better, better look at the pancreas. All right, and if you zoom in there, um, the pancreas, it's, it's an unusual organ because it has both exocrine functions and endocrine functions. So endocrine, um, glands produce chemical hormones that get into the bloodstream and travel all throughout the body and can influence targets that are located a long distance away from the actual gland. Exocrine glands produce substances that are secreted through ducts, D-U-C-T, not D-U-C-K, um, and those get secreted onto body surfaces like the inside of the intestinal tract or the inside of your mouth or your skin. Um, surfaces, linings that ha at least eventually have some exit to the outside of the body. So the pancreas is largely an exocrine gland because it makes digestive enzymes that travel through this big tube you see in, inside the pancreas there. That is the, the main pancreatic duct 
that carries digestive enzymes and squirts them out in here in the duodenum because this is where a lot of your digestion of foods winds up taking place right there in that little stretch of the small intestine. But then inside the pancreas you have little islands or clusters of endocrine tissues. So let me go back to our PowerPoint over here because that's what we're taking a look at here. All right, so here's the whole pancreas. Here's our duodenum. And if you zoomed in on a little microscopic chunk of this tissue, um, here's what you would see in three dimensions. So all these little yellow clusters you see, these are clusters of cells. Those are um, the cells that are involved in the exocrine functions. So they're producing digestive enzymes and other substances that are going to help with digestion of your foods. Those get secreted into these ducts, which are tubes that eventually merge into the big pancreatic duct that carries those over here and squirts them out on the inside of the duodenum. So we'll be talking more about that when we get to the digestive system later in the semester. For right now, um, here in Unit 1, we're interested in these little cell clusters that exist, they're scattered around in the pancreas, and each of these, there are a bunch of these, are called islets, like a little small island um, of Langerhans. Langerhans was the guy who discovered these. So they're little spherical ball-shaped structures, and there are a bunch of cells in here that are represented on the diagram. Those other things that are cut open, those represent blood vessels that are passing through here. All of your endocrine glands are very rich in blood vessels because the blood needs to pick up hormones that are made by these glands and carry those hormones all throughout the body. So you're always going to have a lot of blood vessels around your endocrine glands so they'll quickly pick up these hormones that those glands are producing. All right, within the islets of Langerhans, you have, you actually have three types of cells within there, alpha, beta, and uh, delta cells, but we're only going to be interested in this class really in the alpha and the beta cells. So most of these cells in these islets are either alpha or beta type cells. Those cells make different hormones. So when you guys have the pancreas lecture, over on the physiology side, you want to make sure you keep track of and make note of um, what important hormone is made by the alpha cells of the islet of islets of Langerhans and what really important hormone is made by the beta cells of the islets of Langerhans. This is another representation as well of a pancreatic islet. That's another name for an um, islet of Langerhans. You can use either of those types of terms. I'll give you a hint. One of the hormones is insulin. Very important for regulating the levels of glucose in our blood and other body fluids. Alright, so you will need to be able to recognize on a diagram like these, um, islets of Langerhans, you, you can't distinguish between the alpha and the beta cells, but you should know the names of the cells in here are alpha and beta. You're also going to need to know the hormones that alpha cells make, the hormones that beta cells make. So just use your study guide um, and also disorders. You know, we'll certainly, I'm sure you can probably guess already, uh, a disorder that's associated with the um, islets of Langerhans, diabetes mellitus, both type 1 and type 2 are uh, common disorders that are associated with that part of the part of the pancreas. All right, so that actually concludes all of the endocrine anatomy. So pretty short and sweet for this unit. Do not get used to it. This is the uh, one exception here in anatomy and physiology where you just don't have a whole lot over on the anatomy side to learn. So take advantage of it. There's not a lot to learn. Be sure you know which hormones are made by which glands and learn those disorders that are associated with particular glands. Learn how to identify all of these things. Practice with the practice activity that will be present for you on uh, Blackboard. And hey, this is a, a way to pick up a um, hopefully a pretty easy A on a, on a 100 point exam and it uh, should help you get off to a good start here in Biology 202. All right, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Please post those on the discussion board if you have them so we can chat about them over there. And um, good luck.
and good luck with the physiology side of this unit as well.